Right then, so last week I was actually lucky enough to um, win the first King of Wales two day festival down at Red Hill Fishery in South Wales in Monmouthshire, I think it was. Um, ran by On The Fly TV. Now, a brilliantly run festival, I must say. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you quickly about my two days and leading up to it the day before, that sort of thing, and the actual rigs. Um, first of all, we'll start about the practice. Now, I went down on the Wednesday morning, got there a bit late, it was a very long drive, but um, I drew 39 on pennies, which anyone that knows it, it's a bit of a round lake, but they actually peg the two ends, so it's like a square, but then it's a little bit curved on the ends, and they actually put two ends in, so you're not really on an end peg, but I was the end peg on a straight. Um, I had a brilliant first day, got it a lot wrong, did a lot of things wrong, caught a stupid amount of fish still, but got it very wrong. A bit of, I would say neck ache, but it wasn't, it was directly opposite me off um, Christian Jones. He had a massive wave, like 370 pound. Um, I've had a nice day, like I said, got it very wrong, did a very few things wrong, stopped feeding shallow, I tried catching the edge, chasing tails and all that. And it turns out that not many edge fish were caught those last three days, because it was too hot, it was bright, it was hot sunshine. Um, and I've ended up weighing like 250 pounds, it's still a great day's fishing, unreal venue. And to be honest, I probably spent about two hours sat on the bank after the match, just getting loads of rigs ready and that sort of thing. Because I felt like after that one day alone, I could, once I've heard a lot, all the fishing was very similar across the lakes. So I knew that if I got it right from that day, it should suit all the rest of the days. Um, first day of the two day festival on Thursday, I drew Sophie's peg three. Middle of the lake, wasn't normally a great peg apparently, so the regulars said. Um, John Ivey, Andy Mann, all them, obviously the regulars that you speak to. Um, they said it's normally better opposite and they had a little bit more room opposite too. So I didn't really know what to expect and I've had Alan Rutherford literally right next to me on the next peg. It's been a bit tight. Was, I was actually expecting it to be quite hard. Um, I've ended up having a brilliant start. It's one of them venues where you put your nets in, you start feeding a little bit of bait short or pink some bait and all of a sudden a load of muggers pop up. And I was like, oh, it's quite good this. Started short and I'm, I'm like, oh, there is a few fish about. Um, either side of me both mugged one. I've had Alan fouls on and then Alan Rutherford one side, so I've been owled. Um, and I've had a great start. I've gone mugging, I've stopped, I've come off that short line, stopped mugging about, gone mugging after like five minutes. I've had like hundred pound in probably oh, 90 minutes max. I've had a brilliant start um, and I've led it from the start really. I've just gradually kept it up and got more of a lead really on the lake. Now section wise, should have talked about that. Section wise was a whole lake. On Penny's Lake it was split into two, sections of 11 or 12 I think. I think it was 11. So big sections, you know, we were, we were looking at like three points could probably win instead of two. Um, and then, I've had, well, I started feeding casters shallow, and obviously I've caught carp in, in and out the feed, that sort of thing. That's the reason why I fed shallow for casters. Now, there are not many F1s in that lake, and I got told that you wouldn't catch any shallow. So I've just fed them trying to catch carp, because obviously they will see a lot of casters, and it was definitely the right thing to do. And I've caught carp in around, they've popped up because of it. There's been bow waving through your peg, and I've caught a few doing that. And then, I've, like, my mugging me's gone into my feed, and I've, like, bumped a few, like, pricked a few, and I think, maybe they are F1s. Quickly jumped on my box, got a load of shallow rigs out. Um, and to be honest, I've had a great second half of the match, just caught shallow most of the day. We had an absolute downpour of thunder and lightning for like the last 40 minutes and never had a bite until I dropped in short and had one last chuck with like five minutes to go. But apart from that, I've caught most of the day steady, mugging early, shallow mid-match and late on. Um, I've had a brilliant day, I think I've had 256 pound um, and that was enough to win the lake. I think 129 was second. So yeah, really great first day and I felt like I got a bit lucky, as in that was the harder lake over the over the two day festival and I felt like I caught a big weight off it so I got a bit lucky that sense. Um, obviously I got lucky catching them F1s, no one else on the lake had the M1 so made the right decision fishing for them but also got a bit lucky, they're obviously there muggers wise I got a bit lucky that way obviously ended up being a good peg on the day. Um, day two I think I was fourth in the match then, I think I was the lowest on four so those four section winners I think I was the lowest on weight, not far behind, um, I think it was like 280 or something. Um, and then second day was my turn on pennies, a bit of a rotation, two small lakes and then a day on pennies. Day on pennies and I've drawn 36, I think, just a few down from where I practiced on. Um, and to be honest, I've had a great day. I've had James Howarth next to me to my left in my section. So we had a great battle, to be honest. He's actually ended up mugging more fish than me early on. Um, we've both started mugging, it's been neck and neck and then they seem to disappear a little bit in my peg. The lad to my right started feeling shallow and it just, I was still feeding shallow, but when he'd gone on it and those two poles very close to each other, he was right next to me again. Um, just tend to, he seemed to back off and then I think James didn't feed as much and he was very like coming back and properly to a fair, he's fished a really nice mugging match and he's caught a lot more than me on it. But I've made the decision to just go shallow 
and I've had a great run to be honest. I think his mug has started to drift off a bit, but they were big, so he's carried on doing that, and I've I've like pulled away a little bit. It was probably 30 pound ahead, 20 pound ahead. We probably both had about 100. He had about 120, like an hour and a half, two hours in, probably two hours in. One it wasn't as good, but they are bigger fish on there. Um, like 120, two hours in, and I felt like I needed to like push my peg a little. So I've gone shallow. I've had a great run. I've had like 50 pound really quick. And I felt like I caught him back, but without realising. I think he only had like one or two, but they were big. But I ended up catching him up. And from then on, I just gradually got a bit of a lead on him. He went shallow, but I felt like because I'd gone on mine and I'd like, I'd primed mine first, I'd drawn those fish in. I felt like there was a few more fish in my peg all the time. I've had a few quicker bites. Didn't feel like I was catching a lot more than him, but it turns out I've ended up beating me like 50 pound. I've had a great day. I think I've been second in the match and I've had 275 pound, I'm going to say. Um, I was second late, was second in the match on the day, but most importantly, actually won me section again. Um, James, had, I think, he had 230, so it was a great battle between us. Um, and I think Alan Fowlson won the match with 289 pounds, the exact same weight as the day one winner. Um, so that left me on two points and a weight of like 532 pounds, I think, in total. That wasn't quick maths, don't trust me, that wasn't quick maths. That was, uh, I knew that. But, um, I ended up winning the festival of course that was brilliant absolutely brilliant to get my name on that um, it was the first one there and i can't wait for next year but most importantly i'm going to run you through the rigs that i actually what well, well, won me the festival pretty much now it was pretty much mugging early and then a shallow late on i've not caught many fish shorter in the edge the odd ones both days but nothing that um, makes me want to talk about them rigs now them ducks aren't too happy are they but fixed rig was actually really good on the first day when them f1s are a bit crafty they don't get caught a lot the fixed rig was best so, shortest lash though, two number 10s behind the float, a little dibber style float, three number 11s down the line, two above the hook length, one beneath the float, um, 018 main line, 014 bottom to a 16s and a matrix band. Lovely little band then, do it for all my styles of fishing. Um, so that was the, a good rig for the first day when they're a bit crafty, it was a bit hot, bright, not as much wind as well. Um, never actually caught a lot on an overshotting rig, which is weird for them F1s, but I had a few carp on this as well. Um, so that was really good. The whole rigging total is only 18 inch and I was catching like 10, 12 inches deep, sometimes a little bit even shallower. Really crafty fish. You were like trying to chase fish down thinking there wasn't many fish in your peg, but they weren't. They were sat really high up and you'd never know. Never swirl, nothing. The odd one would, but you would, you, you would convince yourself that they dropped down, but they didn't. Elastic choice, sorry. 12 to 14 slick for a short kill. Brilliant. The big F1's there and you're catching carp as a bonus fish, so you want to fish something strong, reliable. 018 mainline. This rig, exact same rigs, hook lengths, all that sort of thing, elastic wise, but just fishing an overshot in one this time. Best rig throughout the deep was like anything from 10 to 16 inch was the best rigs, a couple set up, but this one was the main one. Um, again, 018 main line, everything the same. Float wise, inline dibber, and six number 10s down the line, five above the hook length, four inch hook length. Again, size 16 and a band, banding casters. Casters were brilliant all week. Um, so they were my shallow rigs for the two days. And then mugging rig. One I absolutely love talking about. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it, folks. Now, lash-wise, I actually normally fish a lot longer lash, but as you can see there, it actually fits on one piece of a long kit. Um, 12 to 14 inch was best on the second day for them bigger fish. But the first day, I've actually caught it like 10 inches deep. And the reason why I fished a shorter lash, the second day, those were a bit more top wind, so I couldn't, I couldn't fish a long lash and get away with it. It was a bit messy, so I had to fish a shorter lash. But the first day, the stamper carp were a lot smaller, and you weren't mugging many, you were actually slapping at loads. So I felt like because I was slapping at loads and turning a rig over, I wanted that shorter lash so I could be able to do that, I could do it a lot quicker and be a lot more accurate. Again, just a number two dibber, two number tens beneath the float. Um, I, sometimes I'd fish a 12 inch hook length if they were a bit more moodier and bigger fish like on Penny's Lake. But the second day I just fished a four or six inch hook length and I was slapping it on fish. Hook wise a 14s to again a matrix band. 014 power micron, 018 mainline again. Sorry, not 014, 018 to 018 on the mugging rig. Um, yellow slick through a long kit, absolutely brilliant. She's got them under control so well. But yeah, lash wise, probably only about two, two and a half foot. I felt like that was best for turning the rig over. I was slapping at loads. It's really weird how they really tune into a slap. You know, sometimes other venues just slap at fish and they spook and they go all mad. It was really good on them two days. I don't know whether it was because there was lots of bait going in, they're just used to so much noise and they react so well to noise, but they were my main free rigs for the two days and actually managed to win me the festival. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight if you did ask any questions about it. But I did get a few about me mugging rigs and that sort of thing. So hopefully that clears up a few questions. And uh, yeah, 
brilliant few two, few two days. Just a quick one, folks, event-wise. Now, obviously, if you didn't know, that was ran by On The Fly TV. Gary Rogers actually runs that. To be fair, they're probably some of the best festivals I've ever fished. Um, got to give them a shout out. They, they really are just unbelievable. Every, every lad there, even Gaz himself said, they were probably the best festivals that, you know, most of us ever fished, Gaz has ever ran, he reckons. The venue wise obviously helped a lot, but Gaz runs a superb event. Now, if you do want to book on to any or have a look at the website, it's on the Fly TV, have a look, have a scroll down. There's hundreds, not quite hundreds, but literally tens of festivals coming up next year already even two years in advance you can book on book your dates message gaz just pay a deposit book on the, the the crack's unbelievable the lads the talent is, is is scary but you learn so much on the festivals it really is good so if you do want to get booked on have a look at on the fly tv page and have a scroll down and see what suits your fancy